Now for our story. Ben Calvert paced angrily up and down the living room of his house on 11th Street in Wakefield. His daughter, Kit, was out. Upstairs, the baby Kit had brought back from California and presented to Ben as his own grandson had been screaming for the past half hour. The sound distracted Ben. He walked about the room nervously, thinking... What the devil is that woman doing to the child? No reason why he should cry like that. Maybe something's sticking him. Maybe he has the colic. His food may not be agreeing with him. There's so many things that can happen. Why doesn't Kit come home? If anything happens to that child. He's such a fine kid. He's going to have the best of everything. The best that money can buy. He's better than anybody else, and he's going to grow up knowing it. He's going to know how to look out for himself. I'll teach him that. If Kit had only been a boy. But, well, I've got a grandson now. Why doesn't she come home? Kit, where have you been? Come in here. Hello, Dad. What's the matter? Listen to your child. He's been yelling for the last half hour while you've been gallivanting around heaven knows where. Well, it's perfectly natural for a child to cry. It doesn't mean a thing. How do you know? He may be ill. <sighs> Nonsense. Well, you might at least stay around the house once in a while and see that he's properly taken care of. But you're so silly, Dad. You brought Miss Thorndike from Chicago. You know she's the very best nurse you can get. So why don't you relax? Relax? Certainly. Miss Thorndike knows what she's doing. Huh. You know, Kit, from your attitude toward your child, I'd hardly call you a doting mother. Well, of course not. I'm not a doting mother. You're... You mean you don't care what happens to your own son? Oh, Dad, don't be such a sentimentalist. What do you expect, anyway? My whole life's been torn up. Everything's in a mess, and you accuse me of being a failure as a mother. Try to remember, I have other things on my mind. So have I, but I still have enough feelings left to worry about my own grandson. All right, all right. You do enough worrying for both of us. I don't like the way you've been acting lately. Oh, for heaven's sake, Dad, let me alone. Every time I see you, all you do is nag at me. I'm going upstairs. No, no, Kit, no, no. Wait a minute. You and I have a lot of things to talk over. That's all we've been doing. Talk, talk, talk. It doesn't do any good, doesn't change anything. I'm sick of it. Snap out of it, snap out of it, Kit. You're acting like an hysterical schoolgirl. That's not going to help the situation. We're in a bad spot. And unless we work things out together, we'll be in a worse one. I saw Bill last night. Oh, did you? And how is our small time casting over getting along? Now, look, behave yourself, will you? Let's discuss this thing intelligently. All right, Dad, I'm listening. Kit, I realize very well how painful, unpleasant a court trial would be for you. I know you want to avoid it. You've no idea how much I want to avoid it. I... We have to think of some other way we must. Exactly. Exactly. I'm glad you see that, too. And there's only one way to avoid it. Since Bill's bound and determined to go ahead... I'm glad you think there is a way. I've been racking my brains... I, uh, made Bill a proposition last night. What sort of a proposition? I told him if he'd agreed not to press suit for custody of the child, that you'd go away quietly. Give him a divorce. But... That I... way we can avoid publicity. Do the thing quickly and without a lot of scandal. After all, the main thing Bill's interested in is his freedom. That stands to reason. <laughs> of course. His freedom to run back to the Lane Farm, pick up with Peggy Douglas where he left off. We want that child. And if Bill's mind is made up about the divorce, there's nothing you can do. That's funny. I almost wish it were the other way around. Other way? What do you mean? Just that I'd rather have... Oh, Nothing. Just my feminine pride. Well, Dad, what did Bill say? Do you think there's any hope he'll accept this... this proposition you made him? Yes, yes, of course I do. After all, he'd be crazy not to. He wouldn't know what to do with that baby if he had him. His whole life would have to revolve around taking care of it. Bill's well, young. even if he does, it's still a bad choice. But anything's better than the custody suit. Dragging the whole thing through the courts... You're right. We can't have that happen, and we won't. You mark my words. Bill's not entirely crazy. He'll listen to reason. Yes? It's as good as settled. At that moment, Bill Meade, whose love Kit had tried to hold by tricking Lisa Fenner into giving up her child, 
was on his way back to work at David Bowman's bank after a trip several miles away to inspect some property. Suddenly, Bill pressed down the brake of David's car, which he used for these business occasions, brought the car to a stop. He'd recognized Aunt Mary Lane's little pickup truck, parked by a farmhouse, just as Aunt Mary herself emerged from the house. Hello, Aunt Mary. Why, Bill. Well, this is a nice surprise. Well, I should say it is. I'm awfully glad to see you. <laughs> You're just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> you look awfully well to me, Bill. I don't believe you need a doctor very badly. Oh, I'm in good shape physically, but mentally I'm sort of up in the air. Well, that's too bad, Bill. Anything I can do to help? Well, if you can spare the time, I wish you'd get in and sit down for a minute. Uh, I'd like to tell you what's been happening. Oh, I think I can spare the time, Bill. Nothing's ever so important that I can't take a little time out to talk to a friend. Oh, swell. No, no, don't bother getting out. Huh? I'm able to get into a car without a man's help. <laughs> there. Uh, I, I hope you don't mind my telling you my various woes, Aunt Mary. I've sort of adopted you as my mother confessor, I guess. Well, of course I don't mind, Bill. I'm glad you trust my opinions enough to ask my advice. But please don't ever consider me infallible. Everyone can make mistakes, you know. <laughs> yeah. But somehow I doubt that you make them very often. Well, Aunt Mary, what I wanted to tell you was this. Uh, ben Calvert made me what you might call a sort of a proposition last night. He did? Yeah. What about Bill? Well, briefly, Mr. Calvert said that if I'd give up all claim to the baby and let them keep him, then Kit would go away somewhere and get a divorce. In other words, he offered me my freedom, in a sense. A nice, quiet divorce in exchange for my son. That's rather a strange offer. Yeah. Particularly from Ben. Yeah, I know. You'd never think he'd get to the point of bargaining. But he seems to be awfully anxious to avoid the things going to court. Well, you know how Ben is. He's got that Calvert pride. Hmm. And then, sometimes things do come up in court. Facts people would rather not air in public. Yeah, I guess that's it, all right. But so far as I'm concerned, I, I just don't want to compromise. I want the divorce, sure. But it's the baby. I'm glad you feel that way, Bill. That the child's welfare is your most important consideration. If only I could be sure it is best for the kid. For me to have him, I mean. It's such a responsibility. If I have him, I want to be sure I can do a good job of it, and, you know, bringing him up properly. Oh, somehow, Bill. I'm not worried about that. I think you could. Yeah, I think I could. But I'm puzzled about Mr. Calvert suggesting that arrangement. It kind of bothers me. Well, it does seem a little odd that Ben's willing to give up one thing to get another. Not like him. But, as I said... He must hate the idea of bringing the matter up in court. Of course, he may realize that there's always the chance he might lose everything in the end. Yeah, that's so. In a way, that bothers me, too. They say it's pretty unusual to award a child to its father. Suppose we did go into court, and I lost. Well, that's something we can't be sure about. But at least, Bill, you'd have some chance that way. I mean, if you were to agree to Ben's proposition right now, you'd know you'd given up your son completely. Oh, I hate to think about it. Bill, you've already told me that what you have to think about is purely and simply what will be best for the baby. That's the important thing. And I feel that whatever you decide will be best in the long run for the child's happiness. That will be the thing to do. As Bill continued on his way to town... He thought over what Aunt Mary had said. Yes, the most important question was, what would be best for the child? But, Bill asked himself again, suppose he refused Ben's proposition, insisted on going to court. He might lose out entirely, lose custody of the child, and in the end, never get his freedom. <laughs> 